seven. We have a go for main engine start. Five, three, two, one. We have booster ignition and liftoff of Space Shuttle Columbia. On January 16, 2003, the Space Shuttle Columbia took off on a scientific mission with seven astronauts on board. From WFAA TV, Channel 8, The Spirit of Texas. 16 days later, WFA captured live footage of it over Texas as it was returning. There it goes. No one expected anything other than a normal re-entry. The uh, bright light you see, obviously some of the uh, some of the heat resistant material lighting up on the shuttle. The shuttle was 16 minutes away from landing in Florida. It never made it. Instead, what our cameras captured was the shuttle exploding. It looked like a normal re-entry because the uh, shuttle would normally light up and re-entry because of the heat of the friction of the Earth's atmosphere. But then we began to see this. You'll notice here, it looks like you can see pieces of the shuttle coming off. This is video from C-SPAN inside Houston's Mission Control when they realized something had gone wrong. FYI, I've just lost four separate uh, temperature transducers on the left side of the vehicle. In other words, the heat sensors were going off. Joe Guthines is a former NASA investigator with knowledge of the Columbia investigation. First indication that there was a problem was when the temperature transducers uh, that were now operating at 100% indicated that there was in fact uh, overheating the current. Back inside Mission Control, they repeatedly tried to reach the astronauts. Columbia Houston UHF comm check. According to NASA, the last transmission from Colonel Rick Husbands was minutes before. His final words, Roger, uh, and then silence. It's uh, believed that there were um, 60 to 90 seconds that existed where the astronauts would have been aware that there was something going wrong. GC flight, fly GC, lock the doors. NASA declared a state of emergency and sent search and rescue crews to East Texas when parts of the shuttle began raining down. Pieces fell over 2,000 square miles. Matt Orwig was the U.S. attorney over the Eastern District of Texas and helped lead the investigation. He says it was considered the largest crime and recovery scene in U.S. history. It's the largest and, and just complex. 84,000 pieces were recovered, pieced together then. Um, to solve the mystery of, of what caused the explosion. Initially, there was concern the explosion was intentional because there was an Israeli astronaut on board and authorities feared he might be a target, so they increased security for the landing. We weren't that far removed from 9-11, and so there was consideration that it could have been a terrorist attack of some kind. NASA raced to recover as much of the shuttle as possible to determine the cause. So thousands of law enforcement officers and soldiers were called in to help recover the parts. While most people turned over what was found, a few residents wanted to keep it. That was considered a crime. People naturally uh, thought that they should be able to keep that or wanted to keep it. And we just stress the importance. A few people were prosecuted for not turning over pieces of the shuttle, but eventually nearly 40% of it was recovered, including the left wing. WFAA was there when a rancher found it. The left wing was critical to the investigation because NASA eventually determined the heat tiles on the wing were damaged on takeoff. The left wing is what actually got hit by a piece of the foam from the main tank. The piece uh, that hit the orbiter was about a little less than two pounds in weight. So anything dealing with that left wing, that was point zero in the investigation. Guthein says NASA knew a piece of the foam had struck the left wing on takeoff, but determined it wasn't a problem. Even WFA's anchors reported that in the first hour of our coverage. NASA said as late as Friday that the damage to those thermal tiles was believed to be minor at that time and posed no safety concern. But it was catastrophic. That's exactly what happened. It was a hole created by the impact, and that hole led to the destruction of the, uh, the orbit. Yeah, I can see your camera. Okay. Among the things recovered was some video from inside the orbiter of the astronauts as they prepared for re-entry. We found this C-SPAN video on YouTube. On 
That's really neat. It's a bright orange yellow out over the nose. You see them going through their final checklist and looking outside the orbiter. This is amazing. It's really getting uh, really bright out there. Yep. Yeah, you definitely don't want to be outside now. But minutes later, they would all perish. All of their remains were recovered in East Texas. Every time uh, human remains were recovered, they would pause everything and have a moment of silence. What is incredible is that two decades later, pieces of the shuttle are still being found, a reminder of this tragic historical event that took place over the Texas sky. In Dallas, I'm Rebecca Lopez.